Yo, this is Jerry Wonder. You checking out? You know I got soul.com. You know Wonder Man with the soul, baby. Let's get it popping. Let's go. You started out with the Fugees back in the 90s. You were sort of like that fourth member. Um, just kind of talk to me about the creative process, you know, that you guys had back in the day. Well, it's just so funny you saying that. I was, I mean, you know, I was just in um, and um, and um, in the room right now listening to to the score, you know. And uh, Wanda Fuji's nineteen ninety five was, you know, I was more more musician, and I I've been playing bass guitar since I was, you know, since I was eleven years old. And bass was a thing for me, and love playing drums. And and when I got introduced to be to the world of the studio, and that's when my dad actually gave me um, gave me his basement to me and Whitecliff and um, and my brother Rennell, three of us, and we built a studio called Booger Basement. You know, Booger Basement was we I put a bunch of equipment, and I was the only one that went to you know be the engineer in school to be an engineer, so I end up, you know, put the studio, did the studio, and that's where, you know, Lauren Hill was coming, and Prods coming, and Clef, and, and my brother and me, and we just really, just, you know, create music, and that was when we decided, you know, decided to work on the score, and the food, you know, at the time, the food, she's already had an album out, you know, drop an album, and, but we was like, yo, we going in to create a classic. You know, but at the time we didn't know it was gonna be classic, but something that in the basement nobody, you know, there was no studio time paying, nobody had to worry about anything. It was just like really, you know, really queer music, you know. Yeah. And 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 at the time, and it was I was man, I was glad to be a part of it, and you know, and to me, people call me like the fourth member because I was the guy, you know, behind the scene and quietly and you know the guy with the sp12 the the, the 12 on uh, the sp1200 sound the mpc you know uh and the 60 sound and then 3000 and and the bass sonic you know a lot of a lot of the the score was a lot of uh bass driven and drums you know yeah. and it was a great team yeah man it's such a i remember those days man it was such a lovely time that's such a lovely time you know yeah you know, you've co-produced a lot of songs with Wyclef throughout the years, and, you know, with Wyclef being who he is, you know, a worldwide name, did it kind of ever bother you at all when, you know, a song that you produced with Wyclef would come out and people would automatically assume that it was a Wyclef production rather than a Wyclef and Jerry Wonder production? Well, you know what? A lot of times, this is why when you're in a camp, you know what I'm saying? When you're in a camp... You know, it's all it's all about all winning. White left when I win, you know, and and uh, a lot of the time, you know, I would go places. That's the th the difference between a lot of time being the artist too, being the face. What I was doing, the magic about me, I was more powerful. Just be in the studio, be the first one in, the last one to leave, and it was more like, you know, me and Clef, we were so connected, and and to me, it's like when you're a team, you're just a team, and. To me, it didn't matter. They say Wyclef and Jerry, but you know, as long as me and Wyclef and Jerry knows we did the record, you know. Yeah. And you know, and that was more important because I will go a place to places. Sometimes they one time I went to a spot where they playing Carlos Santana, Maria, Maria, boom, 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 you know that record, and and I couldn't get in, and they played my song no because nobody knows who I was. Yeah. And you know what? I fucking like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really you know, it was really fun. But you know, a lot of those records so White Clef would always be like White Clef and Jerry Wonder. If you listen to all of them they're always like White Clef and Jerry Wonder. But you know, the public they pick whoever they want it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah, I was going Family through Family first, you know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I was going through your discography and I noticed um, you know, you've had a lot of hits throughout the years from the mid 90s into early 2000s but I'm gonna say around 2008 2009 is when you really started to get on a lot of projects you know was this kinda of done by design or did it just happen but you know what I was doing a lot of traveling you know um, on the road doing shows me and white club doing the stuff and and I even believe it or not that's one of the time to and the little time off I would have 
uh, we used to go a lot. I used to go a lot in Haiti, you know, trying to put infrastructure, help out, and and working with kids, you know, and the ground working on this thing, ELA, you know, helping, uh, you know, my country. There's, there's so many little cherry wonders out there. But, you know, around 2008, you know, I felt like I did a lot of that, and I had to get, you know, I had to get back into, you know, really do my music, you know, focus more on it. And that's when I went, you know, of course, to start with the Justin Bieber and, and start with that, you know, with uh, we doing the Mary, doing, working with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So music, so child, and, and I just got, you know, got back in the studio. That's the thing about me, you know? I, I love, this is why I even take time a lot if you check me every Thursday, where I do take my time, take time out to still do a Q and, you know, a Q and A, and where, where people globally, I got people from, you know, from Germ from Europe, Germany, and and calling, um, call, um, you know, uh, asking me questions from China, asking me questions from Africa, from Haiti, from Jamaica, from you know, from New York, from the whole state. Everyone, I keep I put a little energy in to the world to actually help the young musicians, the young, the young, you know, singers, the young producers, you know, uh, you know. People that want to get to A and R, people that want, you know, management, you know, take the time to answer questions. And since I've been there and done that, and been, and I'm still here, you know, like they were just playing the other day. They played five songs of a, of a, a record between the 2008 and and today. And one day they play five songs on the radio, and I'm like, oh my God, this is such a blessing, you know? Yeah. So to me. It's all it is, man. I it's just put the energy in it and my team, you know, and and, and I just went, you know, whole great team that's working and everybody at Platinum Sound, you know, Wonder Music, you know, to me, Wonder Music, Wonder Music, you know, just doing that. That's what I'm doing. Just focus, man. Okay, and you know, you built that studio, Platinum Sounds. You know, kind of talk to me about the name. You know, how did you come up with that name? Well, you know, to me, you know. It was just, we were just, you know, I was just really vibing and coming, what, what's the best name to come in. I remember they, they used to have a studio called Platinum Island, Manhattan. And I went there when I wanted to build a studio. I went this it was, you know, it was trash. And I was like, oh, my God, it's such a great name. And, 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 and the stuff that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's such a great name. And I stopped thinking, and I was like, you know what, man, it's all good. I'm not calling my Platinum Island platinum sound you know to me it's the sonic you know what i'm saying to you and you know and, and i got a few platinum plaques and you know the little story about platinum sound up when i had the designer doing when we was i was building up the, the studio and uh the front that's when you walk in if you go on a website you're gonna see the front is, and and when i walk when i was out of the open and i went in and and the, the designer trying to surprise me and put some gold in there. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, what's the name of the studio? Is that black? And I'm like, why you got gold? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was just a great name, you know? Yeah. It was good. Yeah. And, you know, you've been working on a lot of projects, um, but the one I'm most excited about is the one that you're doing with Ashanti. You know, of course, you have the uh, first single out, The Woman You Love. Um, we've seen YouTube footage of it, but can you kind of talk to us about how that song came about and how it was created? Man, I tell you like this, man. Ashanti came to see me and and actually, you know, come play me some records. She played me a few a few songs she'd been working around and and you know, me I I was like, man, I've been thinking about what Sonic where, you know, to to, to go out and, and 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 create for her, you know, the right songs and 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 uh for her where she could be her, you know. A lot, of, a lot of the time, you know, people, people will, will come and say, oh my God, I heard Shanti's record, oh my God, she sounds vocally, she sounds so good, musically, melodically, lyrically, sound. that's exactly, I wanted to make sure I give her something that make her different, and that actually showcase her vocals, to me, yo, real talk, she's a good singer, yeah. wonderful, so talented, you know, and, and I don't think, you know, I'm like, you know, she did a lot of things, a lot of songs before and she wrote and I feel like man I wanted to give her somewhere she could really people could she could showcase her vocals people could hear her singing with passion from her heart the kind of person she is you know yeah so to 
to me, that's why, you know, I went in, you know, me and my team, we we went in and, and actually one of my best friends, we was vibing and, and, and Shaq Passe, you know, we went in and, 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 um, and got the record, you know? Yeah. Shout out to Shaq Passe, that's one of my best friends, Shan. Okay. And, you know, I know you're also working on other songs with Ashanti. I mean, I think you guys are going on a Ustream session tonight. You know, can I talk to me about the overall sound that, you know, you're looking to give her for this album? Well, you know, to me, we um, we actually um, got, um, got you know, the first record. And we just vibing a different thing. But whatever, I, you know, we dropping out there, it's always going to be... It's gonna be something that very special, you know. That's why we're not in a hurry. We dropping this, and you're gonna keep dropping things. Cause, you know, we started me and her start a some kind of relationship, like a so close friends. Like I call her anytime. The key is is that when you say somebody's your friend, can you call them anytime? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, I really love working with people that's my friend. I could talk and talk, and then she come she come to the studio and chill, you know, and then work and. And she's like a friend to me, so I'm after for her to win. So the signing that we doing, trust me, is one signing. We got so many more coming. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so that, that's that's where we at right now. Cool. Um, another project I know you're involved with is the Estelle album. You know, you have the single out, Thank You. Kind of talk to me about the creation of that song. Well, you know, Thank You, it's such a, a record that... Uh, that um, um, the track, I did that track, and I was working with Akon. By the way, you know, new Akon coming about to come out really, really soon. Um, you know, for your true. When you hear the new Akon, you could call me, and I give you <laughs> <laughs> about that too. Uh, and I was working with Akon, and I came to check out the studio. While we almost finished the session, and I play Akon about to leave, and, and I, play, I was just like, you know, I just did the track, and I said, in session done, I said, oh, man, I need to listen to that just track, oh, and I hit play, and come saying goodbye to me, and I just hit play, and he's like, he dropped his back, he's like, hold up, what's that? <laughs> I said, I said, um, and, and, um, and he said, hold up, hold up, hold up, he told everybody, he was like, hold on, give me one second, Jerry, play that again, and he went on a microphone, one pass, and wrote the song, just like that in the top and and we did that song i didn't know it was going to be for still i didn't know who it was going to be okay. for and the next day i had a writing session with stell which is you know stell i was on the first album on this album you know i've been working very close me my team you know, Arden and my team we've been working uh very close and and uh with um uh with her and, and you know and and atlantic records you know it's a great friend of you know craig common and the whole team and and Stel came to to came by the studio because we had a writing session, um, and I played her the record, and she's like, "Hold up, Jerry, I'm not saying I want this record because she, she's like, let me just try it." Okay. And real talk, she went in. I gotta tell you, she starts singing the record. Your water start coming out her eyes. Wow. And she was and real talk, and I was like, the way she sound. You know, it's just a certain song made for certain people. Yeah. The way she sounds, man, everybody. When you know the intern, there was an intern in the room. Yep. The intern started crying, too. I was like, my God, I got a crying house. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not. And it was so touchy, man. And, and I know it was it was, it was was her record. And I, and I know that record was going to touch people. And, and it was a special one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was a special one for her. Yeah, you worked on Estelle with her um, last album, and now you're going to be working with her again on her upcoming one. Talk about the uh, chemistry that you guys have, and that you guys have developed over the years. Oh my God, it's him. Now we bet, that's not one of my best friends. Yeah. So, and the thing is, whenever, you know, it's good to have a, a French, great French uh, relationship with, with, you know, with people you work with, you know, like, it's not because you, you work in the person that has stopped by. Oh, let me come say hi to Jerry. You know, that's what I love with my friends. Like, they just come in to say, hey, what's up, Jay? What are you working on? Whoever I'm working on. Yeah. You know, I, mean? I could be working with Kerry Hilson. He can't just say, Let's have, yo, Jerry, I just finished uh, BT. I just finished this VH1 thing. I'm in town. Uh, uh, what you I'm coming to say hi. Just come say hi. And those are the kind of relationship I got with a certain artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so you know, they just stop by and then that's the, the 
thank me and stuff. We friends. Like she called me all the time. I call her all the time. She come to platinum wherever I'm working on. And it's like the other day she can see me to say hi. Next thing you know, she dumping a on the record with Luke James. You know what I'm saying to you? Like uh, it was me and her, Luke James and my team. Yeah. You know, one the music team. You know, shout out to the Wonder Music Crew. We not playing. We in. It's heavy. And it's, next thing you know, we create a, a crazy duet. Oh my God, I keep listening to that song so much. I play it almost every, you know, every time I can, you know. And, and it's such a great duet with uh, with, with, with Stalin and, uh, and Luke James. Yeah. Which is such a great, great artist, great musician. I don't know if you know him, but he's really good. So me and Stalin, man, we like, it's family to me, you know? Yeah. Now, is that Luke James song going to be on Estelle's album or Luke James' album? Actually, it's for Luke James' album, because Estelle's album already done. Man, man I, got a, I got a few records. I think I'm on Estelle. I got a quick little amount. I'm not, I don't want to say how many, but the album I'm about, definitely about to come. But I got a few joints in uh, with Estelle. You know, great record. I can't wait to, you know, for everyone to listen, you know, listen to, uh, to those songs, man. Great album. Oh, okay. You know, you've mentioned that, you know, you worked with Ashanti, Estelle. Along with that, you've worked with people like Mary J. Blige, Carrie Hilson. You know, they're all female R&B artists, but how do you kind of separate the sound between them? You know, because they all have their own different styles. Well, it's like, it's like if you listen to the Carrie Hilson, you know, and you listen to the Mary uh, record, I always actually, you know, by listening to an artist and actually go back Leave that, relax, and be like, let him, let me listen to to give him something special. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to me, you want to make sure that you give him, you give each of them what their content, because it's all about giving them their own content. It's about giving the popular. When I say the popular, means means not pop music, but what you call, you know, a lot of a lot of time people say that's pop music, that's soul music, that's hip hop. No. I say it's a popular a song. That could be a popular with a great hope, with a great thing for, for that person. You know what I'm saying to you? And there's a couple records I have. I already know I'm not playing it for Stell. There's a couple records I won't play for Mary because I got to play for Stell. There's a couple I'm not playing for, you know, I'm not playing for, for Shanti or, or that one is a Gary Hudson, that one, you know. To me, I just like really take my time and trying to give the... the the, the artists I'm working with, something that's special for them. Nobody else, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, here and there, people will say, that one could have been for Mary. No, 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 no. That one is not for me. That one could have been for, for Steph. No, it's not. I always make sure I give with my team where I give the right song to the right artist I'm working with, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I have a couple of songs here that you've done throughout the years, and if you could, you know, just give me any background information about it or what you remember about the studio session or anything like that. The first one that I have for you, you know, it's one of my favorite songs. It's Caramel by City High. You know, talk to me about that one. It's funny you you say that. Um, I had uh, my, my first label, Jimmy Iving, gave me was, I remember when I told you Booker Basement, the studio? Yeah. I called the label Booker Basement, uh, uh, right, you know, Booker Basement. And and the first artist, the only artist group that I put out was, and that label was um, City High, you know? Uh, you had Robbie, Claudette, and Ryan. And, and, and what I like about them was, you know, there was some great writer, great musician, and even I was in the road. I would I would go to the Booker Basement. <laughs> they playing they playing me ideas, and and some of them I go and flip. And and at the time, you know, me and class, we were just going, and some of the stuff I was really close to them, and and the friendship, like I said, the friendship, and and we we did the first record. We had we had I had on them was a record called Why Would You Do. And you know they did the you know they did the track and I walked with them on the track and I was very close. Then the second record was Caramel, and which was you know such a great record. Man, I got to tell you, I love that group, man. And then and, and you know I wish I could have. I'm looking for a whole new city high right now. So yeah, I love that. I love artists that could you know that's not handicapped. The artists that could do things. It's, you know if I'm busy. You, uh, you know, go in the studio, create, and I come in, do my thing, or I'm here, that's a record, I'll be back, do what you gotta do, I got nothing to worry about, you know? Yeah. So, so it's 
So um, that, 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 that was City High. You know, they were so talented, man. I'm looking for my new 2012 City High right now. So I miss those guys. Yeah. Um, another one that I want to ask you about is All the Boys by Carrie Hilson. You know, talk to me about how that song came about. Well, you know, it's so much like All the Boys, you know, like I told you, you know, I got a few friends and I do writing session with, uh, we go in and, you know, I work with, I was, I, I had a meeting with John Legend, I had a writing session with John Legend and, um, and, 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 um, I played John that, that track and he was like, man, I love it, let me take that. And I give him a, put him in a, he went in a little room, a studio I got at Platinum called the Penthouse, and he went in there and wrote um, that right here. And, by the, and, and three days later, I had the session with, um, with Carrie, you know, played the record. She was like, I'm doing this right now. I'm doing it. This is it. And she went and sang the record. It's just such a special record. Yeah. You know? Definitely. And then lastly, uh, one of your biggest placements, Ghetto Superstar. You know, what do you remember about that one? You know, yeah, Ghetto Superstar was a was a great, great record. But, you know, his Don't Lie was like the biggest one with Shakira. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, Ghetto Superstar was a record, you know, me and Wyclef, we did. It was such a great, great record we recorded at the time. And that's when around that time when I when I had uh, the label, Booger Bass, and it was for Ernesto for the movie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, um, at the time, but it was such a great record, you know. We, you know, in that record, it, it, it was Pause, you know, me and Cuff, we put Pause and uh, Maya and Old Dirty Bastards, rest in peace, right now, you know, and that record, you know, it, it, it was such a great time. I remember those days, and actually, we did that record, um, and um, and um, and uh, LA when we did it, it was a, it was, it was a, a lot of fun creating that song. Okay, and um, do you kind of remember how Maya ended up on that song? But at the time, you know, uh, it was like more like Jimmy Iovine, you know, say, yo, we gotta have this chick, and Prize was involved, you know, me, it was me, Clef, from, you know, Prize, you know, and, and, and at the time it was a new chick, like Maya had just came out at the time, you know, it was coming out, and people really didn't know, and the hip hop world knew Maya, and, and it was a, I mean, who, what kind of, if you get a sponsor from, you know, Old Dirty Bastard on the record with you, you know you're hip-hop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, from the Wu-Tang, you know, you know Old Dirty Bastard, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, at the time of Prize, and, you know, and, and um, to me, that's how Maya, you know, they brought Maya in to sing the hook. So talented, man. Yeah. She's a talented woman. I yeah. love her, too. Okay. And then, lastly, if I could, if you just, if you could give me some background on a music soul child song, um, anything. Uh, once again, we're going to go to that, uh, like, the relationship again. Okay. I was working in, Swiss was working in the, uh, actually doing something with Kanye next door, and I was in the other room working on this work with, uh, uh, for music shows, so, uh, for music shows, so, because I, I'm executive for, I was the executive producer on that album, and, and I was going to track and, and, um, uh, the writer that, um, that, uh, that wrote, that wrote that, rec that record was, um, 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 he's from August, August, his name is August from Canada too. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, we playing the record. Next thing you know, Swiss popping up in the room and say, and say, Cherry, what's that? And he start he start going in it, and I put him on the microphone, and then he was like, man, he attacking and body the record, you know? It was like, man, Swiss, you you stand, and he Swiss is a quick friend of mine, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um 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 and um anything we we did a we did a, a bunch of record um did record went with Swiss and. And on uh, with Alicia, we did record we switch for you know for uh, econ for you know me and him are close friends you know one of my best friends so that's how you know uh, we end up on on, on that record switch and up and, and, and that record uh, for music soul child but it's such a lovely album man I really like that album yeah you know you've been in the in industry for almost fifteen years now what is the key to the longevity as a producer you know when the sound of the radio is constantly changing. And I tell, I tell everyone the longevity is just stay, 
you know, stay with your integrity and, and move with the time. Move with the time. The equipment sonic are changing, you're changing with the sonic. But don't ever forget how you your sound because that's why your sound was so big, was so great. And also with the new technology where you blend both worlds and you keep moving on time, you know what I'm saying? And and leave the egos at the door, you know what I mean? It's all about creating music, man. Creating it first, not for money, not for nothing. You know, always know, man, the money could destroy it. But do it with the love of it and you guess what? Somebody use your content, they are, they will pay you for your content. Don't put the money on the front first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just that, get the content and move it to time. Yeah, that is so true. Um, you know, who are you currently working with right now? Well, um, you know, of course I got the between um the Shanti uh, I'm do, I'm doing right now, I'm doing a uh a Shanti uh Movado, Mary, you know, Mary J. Blige, Akon, Jerry Hilson. I'm doing uh, Keisha Cole, Buster, uh, Luke James, Anthony Hamilton, Kevin McCoy, uh, you know, called K-Mac down with Chris Brown, John Legend, you know, um, Chris Cab, you know, Priscilla, working with Tank. I'm doing a lot of things. And, of course, you know, I got one artist that I'm focusing on right now, too. I just start work, working with him, and uh, his name is Y Fame. Uh, wife family, you should check him out. It's a new kid, a genius kid, you know, play every instrument. Okay. You know, uh, doing a lot of things. So, so, I, uh, so to me, to me, uh, it's a, you know, I'm doing uh, different things, you know, and I've just been doing between artists, you know, of course, tonight, the love and hip hop thing I'm doing tonight, you know, uh, doing a Rachel Ray show, moving, I'm doing a lot of things right now. Yeah. Music, you know? Okay. Cool. You know, that's all that I had for you. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add? Man, I just want everyone, man, just follow, you know, Wonder Music, you know, what we're doing. If there's talent, you know, please send it to go on Twitter, follow me, you know, send me. If, you, if you're talented, man, I'm ready. I'm ready right now. I'm looking for my new city. I'm looking for my new, new artists so I could help out. You know, even I'm doing people with names, but I'm looking for the right people artists for the right thing just hit me up you got time and i don't care where you are you ain't get wherever you are in canada i come find you i come to your spot listen to you or find me come see me i, I plan them sound okay cool